All right, so we are in San Bernardino at the San Bernardino History and Railroad Museum. I'm here with Alan. Alan, thanks for having us out here. Thank you for coming. <laughs> you bet. So tell us a little bit about where we're standing right now. Well, we're standing inside the depot in the baggage, railway express, and post office area. Uh, that's what this was utilized for and it's when the depot was in full operation. Now, this is interesting. I, I used to live in San Bernardino. I probably lived literally a half a mile from here, and I had no idea that this was here. So how long has it actually been here? This building was uh, completed in 1918. It replaced an original wooden structure that burnt down in 1916. Now, this is really fascinating. When you walk in, I mean, I, I see glasses with, what, what are these, like railroad uh, pieces right here? All those are lanterns that were used on the railroad at one time. Before, a lot of that was used before uh, we had radios and they would communicate with a lot of these, lantern, with these lanterns. So this is all authentic railroad history, basically. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Now, over here, what do you have over on this side of the, uh, the museum? This section is devoted to the history of San Bernardino. And uh, we have uh, San Bernardino's second Pioneer Hose Company number two and Hose Company number one, which is the horse-drawn uh, uh, piece of equipment. In the case, we have a, uh, a gold scale from San Bernardino's first uh, hotel. We have an inkwell from that hotel, and we have guns from William Holcomb in that cabinet, and a number of other artifacts that pertain to San Bernardino. This is a bay window that you would find in a number oh, of railroad wow. stations. And this is where the station master uh, operated. He could see the trains coming and going. He could, uh, he could uh, issue train orders from here. He could um, send in Morse code, huh? He could do code and receive his stuff. He had controls to stop the trains. Again, some of this was prior to radios, so he could stop the trains and uh, give them, actually give them an order through the hoop. All right, so what do we have here? Here's a conductor and a brake run on a passenger service. Back in the 40s and 50s, it, uh, when people traveled, they all dressed. They wore hats and suits and vests. So consequently, our guys here had to too. This is how they dressed with passenger service. Vest and, and uh, uh, jackets and uh, a pretty formal attire. The chair is out of a chair car that Santa Fe had. And then with the chair car, you had your drink holder and ashtray with it. Sure. These are step stools here. Now, w w this right here, it, what is this? That's, uh, a, that's a signal lantern. So when all the passengers got aboard the train, he would yell, all aboard. Uh -huh. The cotton conductor would yell, all aboard. And he would give a signal. And that would mean that the train was ready to leave. All the doors were shut. So he would shake the uh, lantern. I saw the yeah. Polar Express, by the way. Yeah. Okay. And I, I remember the, uh, Tom Hanks doing that in the Polar Express. So. <laughs> Okay, what we have here is a small Fred Harvey display. San Bernardino had two Harvey houses. There was a Harveyette and a regular Harvey house. They were dining facilities. Fred Harvey was also responsible for supplying all the food on the trains. Again, you can see by the plate here that uh, Fred Harvey had his own china. If you were a Harvey girl and you worked at the Santa Fe Depot, you stayed at the Harvey, Harvey dormitory, which is still here, and you were not allowed to date. Wow. Okay. So just know that if you're a Harvey girl. The other uniform here is a porter's uniform that you would see. And you can see the photos on the back that they were wearing this type of uniform. And there were waiters in, in, in the cars. Behind us is the San Bernardino shops. They were the largest erecting shops west of Topeka. And uh, this section is dedicated to the employees that worked here. Now, this is amazing. I'm looking at this picture on the wall right here. And <laughs> this isn't a freeway. These are all the tracks that are right next to us, right? <laughs> this is the building we're in here. Wow. This was the, called the hump yard. This is where they put together trains and broke, broke up trains to send them to different destinations. All this was shops. Whoa. The car shops, the passenger car shops, the transfer table, diesel repair shops, boiler shop, flu shop, uh, blacksmith shop, tin pipe shop, the roundhouse, powerhouse, battery shop, wheel <laughs> shop, all right in here. This is the section, the, the famous kite-shaped track. Okay. And the kite-shaped track, the tail of the kite went through San Bernardino. It went through Highland, it went through Del Rosa, it went through Redlands, and it was basically an excursion train, and later on it was used to ship oranges. Uh, it also had a stop by the Arrowhead Springs Hotel. All these were the depots that were involved in that. There's only two left, Redlands and Patton. 
in San Bernardino. San Bernardino. Wow. This section over here is about the LA section of the kite track. These are some of the advertisements they had here. Kite shaped track, their slogan was no seen twice seen. This is a typical bell off of a, a steam locomotive and uh, when they would come into an area where there would be people or, or anything around the track they would ring the bell. Go ahead and just give that arm a jerk. You hold that for me real mm -hmm. quick, I got some uh... We wow. have a, one interesting poster, Theodore Roosevelt came through San Bernardino in 1903. He stated to the Sun, which was the Daily Sun at that time, I would like to live in San Bernardino. People say, what? <laughs> and they say, well, you picture him coming down Cajon Pass. There's clouds in the sky, there's snow on the mountains, there's all these agricultural fields in 1903, deer running across the track, and he's an outdoorsman and this is his place. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's uh, what we have dedicated to that. Oh, that was awesome. Behind us here, we have an 1899 Locomobile, and it, it was the first car in San Bernardino Valley. Uh, it was steam powered. There's actually a steam engine underneath this. Amazing. Now, what about this uh, car right here? The next car is a Fairmont motor car, and it was a, a single cylinder unit. And they would lift these on the tracks and they would go out and service switches. They would replace uh, oil in the lamps and do any repairs that they needed to do along the rail line. It's a single cylinder engine. They called them putt-putts because that's how they sounded going down the track. <laughs> Those handles in front, is that literally for lifting it on the yeah, track? So if there's another train coming, they could lift the, the, the unit off the track. Oh, wow. How convenient. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Get it out of the way. It, present, it prevented a lot of problems, too. All right, so Alan, we are standing in the lobby and waiting room of the depot. You know, it's funny, I mean, this, this is really beautiful and it looks like, in the movies, it looks like you would think about it in shows, how a train station should look. All the original tile, all the original flooring, all the original uh, seating is, is still here. This is the Harvey house over here. Okay. That's the original green tile in this room. We can walk in there. Oh, okay. And um, it looks, uh, looks deserted. It's a meeting room for sandbag. Okay. Oh, wow. So now the Harvey house again, this is where... There was a large, there was a large oval counter in here and seats along the side. Now, so this is like a restaurant area where this people... This was the restaurant area. This is the Harvey house. The, the kitchens were behind it. And this is where the, the outfits you were showing us yes. they were wearing yes. earlier. Wow. Okay. All right, so we're outside the depot and you're saying that smoke sack is the last, the what last, remains? Or? The last vestige of the shops that, uh, that remains here. And the smokestack was attached to the powerhouse. It supplied steam, compressed air, acetylene, uh, and it could generate electricity and also pump the water for the fire system here. All right, so uh, Alan, if people want to find out about you guys and take a tour here, where would they go online? They would go to sbdepotmuseum.com, and that will give you the hours and the times that we're the times that we're open and the day that we're open. And you can also uh, uh, schedule uh, private tours during the week for groups. Wow, that's fantastic. Thank you so much. Well, I appreciate you. it, Alan. Thank you very You're much. You're welcome. Again, uh, right here in the Inland Empire in San Bernardino, what a unique, cool place. I got to go catch the train. Bye.